everybody how are you we're on the move late night cross country traveling from De Berg to points west various parts of Ohio and this video is going to be a uh, Columbus community spotlight on a community called Darbydale. What we're, trying, what we're trying to do is get the word out about some cool uh, communities and cities around the country or, or, or wherever. Canada, wherever. Uh, at least in this particular video series, we're doing all kinds of things on this channel, but Darbydale, interesting background in Columbus. It was uh, incorporated in 1801, uh, but settled in like 1780s, a very old town in uh, Columbus, Ohio. With, with that cool name Darbydale, which came from the influence of the founding uh, settling families, who hailed, of course, from England. Darbydale in England in those days had a meeting. It was a horse walker. Darbydale was a horse walker. And a horse walker essentially exercised the horses at the track, uh, at a farm, at a stables. And with the horse background and horse loving families that started Darbydale, they wanted that workaday feeling about the name of their town, plus they just wanted the cool name, Darby Dale. The early uh, area was, as you can imagine, stables, and they did have a very rough horse track out there for racing, and again, this is in the 1800s. Uh, you could bet they had some limited betting. They weren't opposed to that. So the value that they brought to Central Ohio was a, a setup where if you wanted to bet, but you didn't have any money, you could take turns walking the horses and, and return for a bet. Which sounds pretty cool, right? Other than what happened was some people really liked to bet. And they really didn't have a lot of money primarily because they liked to bet. So you had people walking the horses you had more people wanting to or needing to really walk the horses than you had horses to walk. <laughs> Old Ben Darby Dale, he'd call out the uh, call out the window. Elizabeth. Aren't it? Why aren't, why aren't those people? <laughs> that sounded a little Irish, didn't it? Let me see if I can get it. Uh, Elizabeth. Uh, English. Why aren't those people walking horses? Why aren't those people walking horses? people that owe us money, then we have horses that can be walked. <laughs> it's a little late at night to uh, get my accents right, but we're at least close. Uh, so they came up with a novel idea. Instead of the horse walking thing, they said, all right, let's scrap, let, let's scrap that. Let's scrap that. If you, if you want to bet on horse racing, but you, you, you've maybe had a run of 
bad luck or you don't have any money left or you never had that much money or you need money, uh, you can muck the stalls. You can uh, clean the in, in, uh, infield. You can help market the Darbydale track. You, right? So they expanded the number of uh, tasks and chores that you could do. And so what happened was they ended up having a 4,000 member staff in 1825, guys. A 4,000 member staff that worked part time in lieu of having to uh, get thrown in the pokey because they couldn't pay their betting bill. It, it was a really innovative idea and they were able to grow the track to become the biggest horse racing track in the country in 1830, 1831, right through there. Now, of course, by that, uh, over time, other tracks took over. But Darbydale had one of the most, uh, well, had, had the biggest horse racing track in the country, possibly in the world, as well as a innovative, probably the most innovative uh, horse betting slash employment operations ever devised. Now, and they, they've moved on. You go there today, you can still go to the old track and they still have racing there occasionally on sort of historic days, like uh, historic Darbydale days, you know, that kind of thing. And they'll run a few races and you can bet on, bet on them and things like that. But, you know, that's a tricky business, horse racing, and other tracks sort of became higher profile. Your Pimlico's, your Scioto, Scioto Downs, you know, a lot of those. And... Darbydale then took more of a footnote role in the history of horse racing in America than they do currently uh, have any really financial wherewithal to bring the track up to speed, nor really any interest. Because it's become just, uh, you could say, just a regular community these days, and nobody wants to get into that uh, crazy business anymore. They had their share. But what an interesting history about Darbydale, former uh, biggest horse racing track and operation in the country. Well guys, that's Darbydale. It's one of the communities we're going to be focusing on in Ohio and uh, different areas, Columbus and different towns. As we continue to show people all of the neat communities that they should visit when they hit the road. So come on over to Columbus, Ohio. Come on over to Darbydale. Hey, place a bet. Talk to you soon. Oh, and this has been another Joe Ditzel parody. Yeehaw!